Hello and welcome to my build review for Beast as of March 2014. Beast is a build I started in late October of 2013 and a couple of months later I have added quite a few new parts uh, and also changed a couple of existing parts. In this video I will be going over some of these changes I have made and uh, this is the most current version of this build to date. So the first thing I would like to say or talk about is the case and as usual a lot of people uh, comment on this case it's a very unique case in the sense that it is open air so as you can see it's uh, it's all open yes it does come with two tempered side glass panels which uh, fix over here there's rubber stoppers and uh, there's a large glass tempered glass panel on either side I have removed those panels for the sake of uh, showing off the components or components uh, better in this video so do forgive me for the absence of that. So as you can see, uh, she looks a lot different than my previous videos. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll notice a lot of changes, and in this video I'll be going over some of those changes. First off, the biggest change which you would probably notice, uh, if not for the graphics card, so which we'll get to, is the absence and replacement of the Cooler Master V8 GTS CPU cooler. Earlier in my previous video, if you do reference it, it had a beast of a cooler. It was the V8 GTS. It looked crazy out of the world, and it was humongous. Um, you could not see any of the memory, which you can now clearly see. And uh, it basically was huge. I could not even put on my side glass panel because of the size of this of the cooler. Uh, what ended up happening was uh, the cooler started developing a rattling noise, and I decided to send it back to Newegg. And I replaced it with the with the Corsair ATI water cooler. Now this is the Corsair ATI. Um, it's a liquid cooler. It's an integrated liquid cooler, meaning it's a built-in, pre-built unit which does not need to be serviced by the user. So it's got a built-in uh, water block, res pump, tubing, and coolant. I believe it's water uh, running through here. So this is the rad. It's a 120 millimeter. It's pretty thick. I have two Corsair SP120s on both sides. Uh, they did not ship with SP120s. They had uh, their own kind of fan. I had a pair of uh, SP120s on me. These fans are the Corsair static pressure optimized fans. They've got quite a lot of uh, static pressure between the two. Uh, therefore, they work really well in cooling this rad. This, uh, also, they come with the uh, color chain with uh, three different colors of rings, which you can basically put around them. Um, the HADI works much better um, than the Cooler Master VHETS, and I thought that would be obvious, just being liquid cooling. This is a temporary fix again, as I am uh, drawing plans for a water loop for this system, and I'll talk more about that soon. But. Uh, Expect this to be a temporary solution, the Corsair HEDI. It works great. I would have got the H100i, but I did not have space for a uh, 240 rad, as you can see. This 120 takes quite a lot of space already in this case. Alright, moving on. So, um, with the Corsair HEDI, I have been able to get a 4.6 GHz stable overclock on the i7-4770K. Now, the i7-4770K is uh, one of Intel's top-of-the-line Haswell processors, and as I've mentioned in my previous videos, uh, Haswell is uh, one of Intel's latest, I believe the most uh, recent processor edition. They've changed their manufacturing technology. It's 22 nanometers now, so we've seen Intel come all the way from 90 plus nanometers a couple of years ago all the way to 22 nanometers, which is crazy. Uh, again, as I said in my previous video, the manufacturing process is an indicator of the width or the printing process of the actual um, gates and circuits inside the chip or the processor. And it's uh, just an interesting side note, it's very interesting to know that the processor, I'm sure almost all of you have seen a processor before, the actual chip is only about one centimeter square um, in area and that has, uh, this particular processor has close to two billion transistors which is uh, pretty mind-blowing. It's crazy how far technology has come and uh, never, uh, I have never ceased to ma be amazed by that. Well, on this, uh, I have been getting 4.6 gigahertz. It's been stable, running around 50 degrees on full load with Prime 95, uh, very good temperatures. I have even pushed it to 4.7 gigahertz, 
Uh, but it, it hasn't, I've had some stability issues at 4.7 gigahertz, so I've reverted back to 4.6, which I'm very satisfied with. Most 477s are okay, so uh, overclock max about 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz. A few of them go up to 4.6. Very few of them go up to 4.7 and 4.8 and uh, dial that. But I think I've got a pretty decent uh, processor in here. And uh, it's been running stable as a brick. Uh, it hasn't crashed and ever since I've stopped testing it. So um, here we go. Now the next big addition, as you can see, glaring you right in the face is not one, but two beasts of graphics cards. These are the Matrix HD 7970 Platinum graphics cards by ASUS. Now when I bought these, these were the top of the line. Uh, they were, they're equivalent to the R9 280X. They're the same exact chip. Uh, the R9s have a slightly different uh, architecture and they have inclusion of AMD Mantle and uh, other features. But in all essence, these are pretty much the same as, a, as an overclocked platinum version of the R9 280X. So um, they are the 7970s and they are the Matrix Platinum versions. Now, Matrix Platinum is uh, the Matrix line of cards by ASUS. Uh, what they do is they pick the best of the best um, graphics chips. So the 7970 chip, they choose the ones which uh, have the highest uh, overclocking potential. So they test all of theirs and only a small number of chips which pass their overclocking threshold with the stability that they desire are uh, taken to the Matrix Platinum series. Now, the Matrix Platinum series uh, are a little more expensive this particular model has a three slot design so it's very interesting to know um, that each of these cards takes three um, slots so this motherboard is one of the few motherboards that can actually handle a crossfire uh, setup of these two cards because it is a three slot so in essence these two cards are now occupying the space or six PCIe slot cower spaces um, the the Maximus Formula motherboard, the Maximus 6 Formula motherboard does give you the space to do this. And I know some people have been asking, yes, there's a little bit of space between the cards. I'm going to turn on an extra light so you can uh, see it better. I'm not sure if this will make a difference. But yes, the two cards are snug. There is space uh, only on this motherboard. Now, if you do use other motherboards, make sure that you have the space for two triple slot cards. So, in doing so, I do not have any free PCI slots on this motherboard, which is uh, alright with me. I have the one extra component which I need, the ASUS Zonar Essence SDX, which I'll get to. More on these cards. These cards are absolute beasts. Uh, they are triple slot, they've got these, these humongous heat sinks, they've got two fans which uh, are very powerful and they are very efficient as well. They do get a little loud if you push them to the max, but that doesn't happen a lot, so um, I'm fine with that. So these cards uh, on their internals, they run the 7970 chip, they are overclocked, they are factory overclocked to 1100 MHz uh, core clocks, which is 100 MHz more than the gigahertz edition of the chips that, or the cards that ASUS brings out and most manufacturers bring out, so it's a little more uh, overclocked from the factory than normal overclocked graphics cards. The memory clock runs at an astounding 6.6 .6 gigahertz. Uh, the memory on these cards is each of them has 3 gigabytes of uh, GDDR5 memory and uh, the memory clock is about 6.6600 6, megahertz which is crazy. And uh, these cards I will later in this video towards the end I will run uh, the Unigen Valley benchmark and I will show you what kind of uh, frames per second I'm getting. The other neat feature about these cards are the lights you see. These matrix uh, lights, they change color depending on the load of the card. So uh, right now it's light blue meaning there's really light or no load at all on the cards. Uh, with medium load they turn dark blue, with heavy load they turn purple, and with extreme loading they turn red. Now you don't see it turn red unless you're running a benchmark because most games don't even um, load this these cards to the maximum. As you can see they do have the crossfire cable. A lot of newer graphics cards have eliminated the need for crossfire uh, the cable between them by using the actual PCIe slots to uh, channel crossfire. And the last thing to note about these cards if you do uh, if you are interested in buying them or checking them out 
they do use two 8-pin PCIe power connectors now, which I find I find that's funny because even like more powerful cards like the R9290X, they only use a 6 and an 8-pin connector, but these use two 8-pin connectors. Uh, I think I believe 8-pin connectors are rated at up to 150 watts each. So each of these cards has a maximum power uh, threshold of about 300 watts, which is pretty crazy. So do keep that in mind. I believe that the two 8-pins are due to the fact that this uh, these cards have larger heat sinks and more powerful fans, and they are overclocked a little higher than usual. Now moving on to the next component, which is going to be a little harder to see, right here, um, if I can get it to focus. This is one of my favorite parts about uh, for favorite components, which made a huge difference. Now I do not consider myself as an audiophile, but I do enjoy music, especially classical music and uh, a lot of that. So I did end up getting a pair of really nice speakers, the Audio Engine A5 Pluses, which are right over here. So these are the Audio Engine A5 Pluses. They're great speakers. They've, they've got, I'll talk more about them soon. But uh, in order to run them, I decided to get a high-end uh, sound card. So this is a 24-bit uh, sound card produced by Asus. This is their top-of-the-line Essence STX uh, Chime of the Tiger series uh, card uh, sound cards. They have pretty high-end fe features. They've got some pretty great shielding, 24-bit DAC, 600 ohm headphone amp, uh, pretty much all the high-end features you can expect from a top-of-the-line audio card. Uh, they also have gold Nike and Nikki Khan capacitors and uh, a lot of crazy stuff. Very, very high-quality card. The card does need its own power, so it does have a 4-pin Molex power connector at the bottom. And uh, this card, I was very surprised at the difference the sound card made in the audio quality. It was phenomenal. Uh, I ran the Audio Engine A5s for a while using the integrated sound. The uh, Maximus 6 formula, which you see in this video, has a great sound card built into it. It's got the Supreme FX uh, sound card, which is supposed to be a little better than your traditional sound card. Uh, they've kind of made it... They've, what they've tried to do is they've tried to put an audio file grade sound card integrated to the motherboard, but nonetheless, when I did add this Essence uh, STX, it just made... Uh, I don't know if it was psychological, but it, I, to me it definitely did sound better. Everything sounded so much more clean. There was no noise whatsoever when I played high quality files and no buzz, none of that. And, you know, classical music, especially especially notes of pianos and high notes and treble, everything just came out so crystal clear. It's hard to describe. Uh, <laughs> again, I'm not an audiophile, but I really do appreciate the good sound. And, uh, I think this card has made a lot of difference. The Asus Zonar Essence STX retails for close to uh, $160, and you can find that if you're interested in it. Do know that it's a two-channel uh, sound card, so it's not one of those surround sound uh, dealios. And I'll show you on the back. You have um, you have what you have an RCA. You have a toss link. That's an SPDIF output. It's optical as well as so it's a Sony Philips as well. In good format, I think. Um, well, and you have a, you have your line in your headphone, and then you have two RCA for the speakers, which goes straight to the speakers. The Audio Engine A5s came with two gold-plated speaker cables, and uh, I think that's great. Um, other than that, now you can finally see the memory, as I told you. Uh, so earlier, the Cooler Master VGTS was in the way, but this is, as I said in my last video. Same memory as before, these are the G-Skill Ripjaws X-Series 2133 MHz cards. There are four 8GB cards here, as you can see. Uh, all of them have heat sinks, they're pretty high-end memory, they work great, I've had no problems whatsoever, everything checks out fine. Um, there's a total of 32GB of memory here, they're 2133 MHz as I just said, and uh, they run great. I've never uh, actually used all 32 gigs, which is unlikely because for today's, for right now, 16 gig usually suffices, but I did want to get all of my memory to be the same uh, when I bought it, so I bought a kit of four cards because I'm not a big fan of mixing and ma matching later on. All right, so, um, so next uh, change which I have made is the hard drives. Uh, I do have two Western Digital blue hard drives. Yes, I think they're blue. Um, they're blue. 
one terabyte hard drives as you can see the first two SATA cables yes they are UV reactive SATA cables they are made by a company called OK Gear I got them off Newegg for about 99 cents each so I bought a couple of them uh, this is what the cable looks like in normal light and in UV light they glow really vibrantly and these uh, cold cathodes are from Logisys they're less than 10 bucks um, they're pretty great CCFLs I haven't had very good results with LED UV light so I opted for CCFLs anyway talking about the hard drives uh, so there are two uh, one terabyte hard drives made by Western Digital 7200 RPM all that fun stuff in RAID 0, RAID 0 so RAID 0 is redundant uh, array of inexpensive or independent drives or disks whatever you call it uh, what you have is you have data being uh, split between two drives and being written at the same time. So you have a theoretical 2x the speed in write performance and also a much faster read performance because you can access both drives at the same time. The only problem with uh, RAID 0 is the fact that it's not as stable or reliable as uh, conventional hard drive setups or RAID 1 where uh, two hard drives are basically just mirrors of each other. The reason for this is being that if you lose one drive if one drive goes corrupt or has failure or any of that fun stuff you will lose the data on both drives so it is definitely at a higher risk and for this effect I have right there in the back a uh, third hard drive this is the uh, Western Digital green yes I'd like to say it's a green uh, two terabyte hard drive so that's the backup I use uh, ESAS or EASAS I'm not sure it's a backup utility I used to regularly do backups of the hard drive and the Samsung 840 Pro SSD which is my boot drive it's a 256 GB boot drive same as before and uh, those are regularly backed up to the RAID and the uh, backup volume now this uh, obviously with all of these new parts in the system I did have to change out my power supply so that is the next feature which I'll be going on to speak about in this video this is a beast and a very beautiful looking beast of a power supply. This is the Silencer MK3 1200 watt platinum Haswell ready power supply made by PC Power and Cooling. And uh, I think uh, PC Power and Cooling used to be OZZ uh, before, but now this is probably one of the best power supplies, high capacity power supplies you can get for money. Uh, when it's today. The reviews on UA are fantastic. My experience with this has been fantastic. It comes with an unrivaled 10 year warranty, which uh, which if they follow through with that, that would be pretty awesome because 10 years is quite a long time to warranty a uh, power supply. Anyway, this is a 1200 watt power supply. It's platinum rated, so it does have an efficiency of about 92% or more. But one of the best features about this uh, power supply, as the name suggests, is it's silent. Uh, there is a large 140 millimeter fan uh, in the back. I've, so the way this uh, power supply works is it is passively cooled for up to 600 watts of power output. Now that's only halfway of the 1200. So it's very interesting to know that for up to 600 watts this fan doesn't even have to turn on. Uh, it's just cooled passively and it doesn't even need to turn on the fan and produce any noise whatsoever. Uh, so that's very interesting. In, I've only had the fan turn on like probably two or three times during very very heavy benchmarking when I've actually pushed the system to limits uh, doing testing and stuff and uh, I've to be honest I've really not seen the fan go on and I haven't heard a single thing from the power supply throughout this is a great power supply it's a really good uh, a lot of people skimp on power supplies I think the power supply is one of the components you definitely want to spend good money on it's powering all your other expensive parts like graphics cards and processors and what not you do not want any of these uh, components to be damaged in the event of uh, overloading short circuits uh, voltage surges or any of that stuff which can happen anytime so uh, definitely do get a good power supply for your build it's a good investment they last for a long time you can generally use them in the future now that uh, those are most of the uh, changes I've made now I do know I noticed that you guys uh, can see the new lighting Obviously that looks different. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off some of the lights again. And I'm gonna show off the UV lighting on this. And also show you a little new surprise. Alright. Alright, so this is the case in the dark. Let me turn on one turn off one more light. As you can see, it looks beautiful. Um, 
so I've got four UVCCFLs from uh, Logisys, yes. I got them off Amazon for about 10 bucks a piece. Well, they're not too bad. Uh, they do a great job of lighting up the UV components. Now, these UV lights are a new addition, and I would like your feedback regarding uh, something about the UV lights. Now, I can't uh, change a lot of the cables. I've already put SATA UV reactive cables, but I am interested in painting or adding some kind of uh, coat or spray paint to this system to make it look better under UV light. What I preferably want is something that'll be invisible during daytime and uh, only reactive to UV light. Now, do let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for the lighting. I would love to mess around with this build. And uh, as far as that goes, I have already tried. So I've uh, I found something on Amazon. This is, okay, so let me see if I can get that to light up. So this is a little uh, jar of UV reactive glow-in-the-dark paint by a company called Technoglow. That's very really interesting because it takes a while to react to the UV. And uh, as you can see, it's just reacting to the UV, and it's uh, it's substrate or it's the particles in it are just getting excited. So as you can see, it started glowing already. So it's a uh, let's see, let's give it a little more time. So this is some uh, UV paint. I've I like it. It's pretty cool. It glows in the dark, which is very good. But uh, its consistency isn't the best for painting the parts in the computer. Now the main things which I would want to paint are the pipes for the Corsair ATDI, which are black. I would like to paint them in some sort of color. And uh, let me show you also how this looks. So I painted on paper. I used uh, this right here. This material, this paint material. The glow in the dark paint. And as you can see it's slowly reacting. This is the UV paint. Just a few drops on paper all that fun stuff uh, let me now now when I take it off it's glowing nice and vibrant it's green almost alien it's also glow in the dark so even if I uh, say put it in my drawer shield it from UV light you can see it's glowing dark and it stays glowing for a while so it's just something I thought you might like uh, to see it's very interesting uh, a lot of uh, good chemical properties about these kind of paints all right moving on so that is the lighting for this case. Uh, I also do have uh, the LED strip which I've had in the previous videos on this. So that's uh, by NZXT. I can adjust the brightness. There's the switch. I can even turn it off for a pure UV effect. As you can see, the, uh, the static pressure fan from Corsair has the blue ring, which actually I don't know if it's UV reactive, but it definitely does glow uh, or it does look good. In UV light. So I have the SATA cables going on, which are UV reactive, and then the graphics cards and the orange and blue case, which looks fantastic. Now back to the lights. All right, let's turn on the lights. So that's the computer. Uh, forgive me for the mess of the cables. I just installed the CCFLs, two of them today, and I had to move everything around, so I haven't got the cable routing back to normal but uh, let me talk more on my other peripherals so as you can notice uh, I've changed out the monitor now if I can get it to focus right alright so um, if you remember in my previous build uh, in my previous video I had a ViewSonic 24 inch uh, full HD monitor that has now been replaced with an Asus 27 inch uh, edge to edge borderless IPS 27 inch uh, full HD monitor. So it's quite a mouthful, but um, it's full IPS, so it's got some pretty great uh, viewing angles. IPS stands for in plane switching. It's a little more advanced kind of display, especially for viewing angles, color reproduction, all that fun stuff. So you can see the viewing angles really good. No distortion whatsoever. No dead pixels, none of that stuff. Very high quality display. Uh, a little on the pricey side, but it's. Uh, great I love that it's borderless so the bezel is really thin if I can again get it to focus that's a bezel there it's a rather thin bezel and then the audio engine a5 plus speakers which are fantastic now these speakers are probably some of uh, these speakers I really appreciate these speakers for the fact that they look great I'm a huge fan of industrial design and I think these features these speakers just look great uh, they come in a great bamboo finish uh, and they sound remarkable. 
very clear they're very very precise they are they get really loud they can fill up a large room i i have a small dorm room so uh, it's not a very large room but i have taken these speakers to a much much larger room and uh, had them really really um, they have a great output they go loud and they don't distort great for all sorts of music from you know party music or even like what I listen to is classical so they sound great with Chopin or Bach or <laughs> pretty much anything out there if you as long as you have a good sound card and good speakers and good quality audio files like 24-bit flat files man you can really tell a difference uh, in the audio quality it's it's definitely a treat to the soul <laughs> if I may say it that way the next component that I will uh, be talking about is the Razer Rubros, if I said that right. This is a new mouse I got. This is made by Razer. I had a Razer Naga. This is a slightly better version. It's wireless. It runs in uh, wired mode as well. It's uh, got 8600 DPI sensor. It's got a clutch trigger and all sorts of buttons and bells and whistles. It's rechargeable. Um, it's got adjustable... No, I'm going to try to do this one, with one hand, but... Uh, Alright, so you can take off these uh, side grips and you can install like a smaller grip, which I have uh, my drawer right here, if that's the right side. I don't know if it is. No, that's not the right one. Alright, so you can so you see how it snaps on? So I just changed, I've just customized the mouse now to a more, you know, a different kind of uh, fit, like for narrower hands I guess. So that's something pretty cool you can do with the mouse. You can extend it, you can customize this in several ways, the back, you can take it out and forward, you can change the lean angle, uh, all that fun stuff. It's made for gaming. Uh, I'm not the world's biggest gamer, I don't really game too much, I don't have a lot of time for gaming to be honest, uh, with college and everything. But uh, it's definitely a good mouse, I like uh, Razer, they have some pretty cool design, they look pretty out of the world. And I love their color scheme. I'm hoping to. This is the Razer Black Widow. It's the older Black Widow, so it has blue lighting. I do want to get a Black Widow Ultimate or another similar mechanical keyboard with backlighting. So if you do have any suggestions for what you think would be a good mechanical keyboard, I do a lot of typing. So I would like that. Um, do let me know in the comments below. Aside from that, uh, this review is made almost complete. Now, for the last bit, I will show you some of the. Uh, overclocking profile uh, setup that I have. So this is uh, the motherboards, with the software that came bundled with the motherboard. It's called Dual Intelligent Processors 4. Um, it comes with an ASUS board. It interacts directly with the board. It shows you a couple of cool stats. You can even overclock it from here, even though, yeah, if you're a beginner overclocker, I think using the software would be a great idea because it does it for you. It doesn't make uh, the mistakes that you can make if you're doing it for the first time. So as you can see, uh, let me see. Uh, the, so it's running at, uh, yeah, okay, so we have our strap at 100 megahertz and our multiplier at 46. So uh, that's a total clock frequency. That's a total frequency on the 4770K at 4600 megahertz. So um, since it is a K series processor, the multiplier comes unlocked, whereas in uh, non K series processors, the multipliers are usually uh, not as manipulative, manipulatable, if that's the word. Well, um, right now the system's not under any heavy load. Um, the core voltage is 0.704. It'll max out about uh, 1.28. I think that's the threshold I've set on it. Um, CPU is running at 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, all that fun stuff. This, the cooling's good. It's got a fan benchmark, apparently, uh, which is determined by the software of 0.36 degrees Celsius rise per watt of power increase. So that's not too bad. Uh, the Corsair ATDI and the open air design of the case make it great. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run a quick test of Prime95. Prime95 is a very popular stress test. So for that I'm going to run Real Temp GT. Real Temp GT is a little slightly more accurate version of uh, the temperature indicator. It uses the sensors on the motherboard and the processor to give you uh, an actual core temperature. So right now it's about uh, 27, 28 degrees Celsius at the processor, which is fairly cool, it's not doing anything, that's fine, uh, but uh, it's got about 70 degrees left to go before it starts throttling. Uh, okay, now let's run uh, Prime95. Let me also run CPU, 
Z, so you can see the CPU. Oh boy, some kind of error there. Let's see if it starts up. All right, so this is CPU Z. For some reason, it's not. Yes, it's not working. All right. I don't know if I if the software for CPU Z has gone corrupt. Something very. Hopefully, restarting it will just fix it. There we go. All right, so that's CPU Z working without a problem. Uh, so it is a Core i i7 4770K. I talked about the manufacturing process. It's definitely great. Haswell has a lot of great features. 22 nanometers, uh, which is a great thing. I mean, I guess it's a, just a continuation of Moore's law. Technology gets smaller and cheaper and more powerful and awesome. <laughs> well, uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. And I'm going to start Prime 95. Prime 95 is a torture test. It's one of the most intense tests that you can. Uh, let's see, test. Oops. Torture test. All right, I'm going to run a blend test. Uh, it's going to test everything with pre CPU, the RAM. Basically, going to put a 100% load on CPU continuously, no mercy whatsoever. I'm running eight threads at once, so uh, it's going to utilize all of that, all of those cores on the i7. So that's the test running. As you can see, the temperature suddenly shot up to 62 degrees, uh, and then the Corsair HADI started working, and uh, temperature's dropping. So as you can see here, the processor's running almost at a full 4.6 GHz, 4595, uh, it'll go up more. There you go, 4.6 GHz, 4600 megahertz. Core voltage is maxed out at 1.28 volts, which is uh, pretty low. And the CPU speed is not going to go above 50, hopefully. <laughs> so I've had uh, this uh, Corsair HADI works great. And uh, these temperatures are pretty low for an overclock of this nature. Now, maybe not as efficient as a full closed water loop. That is something which I'm planning to do soon when I can afford it and when I can figure out a way to do it in this case. Uh, but uh, that is Prime 95 running and uh, looking at real time GT. We see the internal temperature in the core reaching about 70 degrees, which is totally fine. They normally uh, throttle at about 90, 94 degrees, or even 100 degrees. But uh, yeah, it's nowhere close to that. So system is running cool, stable. I've had this test running for, uh, I'd like to say, 18 hours at a point of time. And uh, even more before that, with different other two weeks, and I had about two to three, four weeks of testing when I was building her. I've even had it run at 4.7 gigahertz, and uh, it worked pretty fine, but then I did have some stability issues at times. But uh, I have made a change. I've changed out the fans. So as I did say, the HADI did not come with SP120 fans by Corsair. They came with the more generic kind of fan. I changed them out for these fans and my cooling has become significantly better, temperatures have gone down maybe 2 or 3 degrees. So I haven't uh, really pushed the overclock after changing the fans out, I don't know if it's going to make a difference. Uh, once I get my water loop in, I'll try pushing the overclock a little higher and see if I'm lucky and get that 4.7 <coughs> mark. Um, Alright, so we see the temperature gone up to 56, uh, it doesn't go about 16. Um, it's it's pretty it runs pretty cool for the most part. I've never had heat issues. You generally don't have a lot of cooling issues with the open air case and liquid cooling and all that. Now, what one component that does get particularly hot? I'm going to stop Prime 95 right here. One component that does get hot are the graphics cards. So for your uh, viewing pleasure, <laughs> and just to see what these cards can do, I am going to run a benchmark. The Unigen Valley benchmark. So let's see if I can find it. Should have made a shortcut for this. There it is. So the Valley benchmark is uh, one of my favorite benchmarks. It's a very, it's a very uh, aesthetic benchmark. Benchmark. It looks great. A lot of trees and you know environments and lighting. So I'm going to run an Extreme HD. So there we go. It's the highest preset. It's going to run a 1080p on this monitor. And let's see what kind of results we get. So let's start this benchmark. Now these cards are in crossfire and I will show you how the color of the indicator on the matrix are. cards change. So as you can see, pretty beautiful. Alright, let's uh, focus this and I'll 
I'll show you the kind of. All right, so this is the uh, frame rate I'm getting. So you can see the temperature is about 65 degrees. For some reason, it only shows one card on here, but clearly both cards are working together. I'm getting about 100 frames per second, uh, anywhere between 100 and 120, 90 and 130. So. It's a very beautiful uh, benchmark. I, I think it looks great. The lighting, the HDR, the anisotropic filtering, and HLS, and everything is great. Um, you can change uh, so the settings. This is what's running on right now 1080p, materializing index, V-Sync's off. Now, wireframes are interesting because it shows you every single polygon that is rendered in real time, which I think is pretty cool because. It looks trippy. <laughs> oh well. And uh, let's see. So that's the Unigen Valley benchmark running. It's running at between 90 frames per second and 120, somewhere maybe average of uh, 105, 110 frames per second. As you can see, uh, the cards here are changing colors according to the matrix uh, load profile indicators. So you, both of them are purple, which means both of them are heavy load. Uh, you will notice that um, they may turn red sometimes. Yes, there you go. That's an extreme load. Now both cards split the work being crossfire. You can hear the fans go on a little louder. And uh, so that's that's this computer being tested to its limits, or say been given a load worthy of it. So that's the benchmark running over there. And. Uh, so I think I've covered most of the changes. Forgive me for this being a longer video than usual, but I really wanted to go in depth on a lot of the things which have changed. It has been a great pleasure um, building this computer and using it every day. Do let me know if you have any suggestions or questions, um, especially uh, if you can answer my questions regarding good ideas for ultraviolet reactive paint or any kind of lighting ideas or UV glow ideas I can do with this case. Also another question I have for the viewers is I do want to do a water, uh, water loop on this computer and uh, I would like to have a larger radiator probably a 240 or 360 and uh, I do not want to lose the hard drive enclosure so if I can I'm trying to draw up a plan uh, or a layout for this water cl closed loop um, and if you have any ideas, do let me know. I've seen some uh, people use this case and take out the hard drive enclosure and put in a res or a rad or something there. But I really can't afford to lose the hard drives uh, because SSDs just don't have enough storage today. Well, they do, but they're just pretty expensive. Well, so that concludes my video. I hope you enjoyed it. So this is Beast. Uh, she was... Uh, I started building her in late October 2006 and as of now, the end of February 2014, uh, I uh, think she's evolved and delivered some pretty great results. So thank you for watching, please uh, comment on the video, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and uh, have a great time. Bye.